Hi, it's Paula from Paula Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. From the last few uh, trips to scrap store and from some do some uh, donations, I've gathered quite a lot of uh, kids' scraps and um, also some solids. So I thought today I will mix up those two type of fabrics to make a another uh, easy block. Um, something very scrappy where you can use up all of your scraps so so i've got my tray with kits um and i've got my tray with solids i've quickly touched up on the trays uh, and my storage system in the last tutorial but i will make a longer tutorial soon uh, what quickly what i've got here six and a half inch squares four and a half inch squares two and a half inch squares two and a half by uh, four and a half and two and a half by six and a half each tray I've got by type got the same sizes so it's easy to mix and match uh, as I need them. So for do today's tutorial I will need some two and a half inch plain squ uh, squares. I will put them aside and I will need some four and a half uh, plain uh, solid fabric squares. So I will put them aside and I can take my tray away. Uh, from my kids fabric uh, tray I will need six and a half inch uh, fabric squares so I'll have a bunch of those I will also need some of the squares so I'll put those aside and I think that's all from this box for now as I was processing my fabric I also cut some of them to uh, one and a half inch strips and uh, I will need both solids and uh, kids fabrics for that project so I've got those ones here as well so first um, I will make two of those blocks to show you how to uh, put it together. The block will finish at 10.5 inch so obviously you need to calculate how many blocks you want for the size you would like. Um, for each block we will need um, two 6.5 inch strips of uh, solids and let me take this blue and yellow. I'm making two blocks so I will need four. I'll just stack them up to cut to six and a half inches in one go. Let's go with this bright one here. And I will also need two of uh, six and a half inch long um, other fabric or colorful fabric. So because I'm making two blocks, I will take four pieces. Again, I'll just stack them up here. Some flowers here and Christmas. I don't think I want Christmas on this project. <laughs> three and just one more this one okay so that's from the kids fabric strips done okay and I can quickly cut them in one go to six and a half inch and I think if you have your scraps prepared like I've kind of talked you through uh, for those um, squares and smaller squares and bigger squares and medium sized squares then that's all the prep you need to now put that block kind of start sewing the block so that will go away for now so the first step nothing complicated I'm just pairing up my uh, colorful strips with my uh, plain fabric and I'm just gonna stitch it together that's all there it is with the quarter inch allowance Step one with the quarter inch foot and we we'll need to change the foot now to something else because we are going to be uh, doing lots of snowballing. Now I will take my strips to the iron and open them up and we'll be ready for the next step. Now directions of those seams is irrelevant, just iron them uh, anyhow they like to be ironed. Normally I go with whatever fabrics wants because that's when they lie the flattest. Okay, so the next step, I will take my six and a half inch squares. So let's pick something nice. Um, I do kind of feel like it will be more boyish quilt than girl quilt. So I will go with some more boyish stuff here. So here we go, we've got dinosaurs and we've got some fishes, that will be fine. And the first snowballing will be with a plain fabric, so let's take something that will kind of give us a little bit of contrast here. I think this yellow will look nice on 
the fishes. Now um, you can take, you can draw a line here if you wish, or you can iron it. I will just finger press just to make myself a little bit of crease, so I know where I want to go with the sewing. Same on this one. So I've changed my foot to open toe one, but any any other foot than quarter inch will be fine. Uh, you just want to have a better visibility of where you sewing. Now I will put another line of stitching about a half an inch down under the first one. And that will create for us a second half square triangle we can use in this project, or not second, first one. <laughs> Okay, so let me cut out that first bit and then I'll, what I will do, I don't take it to the iron if yet because I want to snow, uh, snowball again this corner so I will take my two and a half inch squares and I will do the same thing. So again I'm just going to make that crease for myself with finger pressing but you can either draw a line or take it to the iron and iron the line as well, however you like it. Uh, just a tip, make sure you fold them to the left side together because then you have a groove to sew on rather than the bump. Uh, let me just choose something maybe more colorful for that one. Oh, this one will look nice. Oh, green one. Just to give a little bit of more contrast here. There you go. And again, I will just stitch on the line. Now here I will just cut out my um, excess and you've seen this tutorial, all of that will go to the bucket to make uh, my adding tape. Now I can take it to the iron and make sure it's nice and flat. I will also iron my uh, half square triangles because we'll need to square them up uh, to use in this block. Okay, so I've got them back from the ironing and I need to square those blocks to two and a half inch squares. And I'm just using my square ruler which got diagonal line. I'm aligning first my diagonal line in the middle of the block. Just to trim the excess here, make it nice and even. And then go back and now I'm looking for my two and a half inch marking. I'm aligning those lines here for two and a half inches and I'm going to trim that. Now those small pieces here will go to this bucket with uh, that tutorial. So again, nothing kind of disappears, it's just changing uh, the use. Okay, so we are ready to put somewhat the shape of the block together. So we've got this square here then we'll put the one of those um, mix of uh, mix of plain and colorful fabric on the top and on the side you you can decide whether you would like a, a plain fabric or the colorful fabric to go around the block. I'm choosing to have my solid fabric to the inside. Now I will use the square from that half square triangle to add here as well and I'm putting it my solid color to the inside. So that's first part of the block kind of laid out but we haven't finished yet because we now take some solid uh, two and a half inch squares and we also snowball those corners here. So let me just first pick the colors I would like to put. So let's say this green-ish will go here. And maybe this orange will go, no, maybe it will be something more contrasting. Brown, let's put brown on this corner. So again, I'm just marking myself the middle. I'm 
of those ones. But with solids it's easier because usually they are the same on both sides so whichever you mark them is fine. And I want to place my uh, uh, plain fabric so I will snowball this corner like this and just this corner like that. So kind of they are matching the solid uh, on this corner. And I normally lay them out first because then I know I will mix I won't mix them up when I'm sewing. <laughs> so let's just quickly take those. Now because we're sewing here without fabric on the sides here, the machines like to kind of eat your fabric down before you start sewing. So it's good to have a little bit of scrap here. And I will just use those uh, to do my leaders and enders. So that means the fabric is not going to be eaten by my machine because there's something it can pull on. And then I'm just starting here. And obviously if you had more um, blocks to work on, if you lay them all out, you can just chain piece them one after another here and the machine will not eat those either. Okay. We're almost there with that first part of the block because there will be second part of the block which I will show you in a minute. So again I'll just cut out all my corners about quarter inch from the sewing line. I will take them to the iron and open up and we will be able to sew this, that first part of the block together. Here we go. Now I can change my uh, foot back to the quarter one because we'll be sewing with the quarter inch allowance. It's now a four patch, so there's nothing complicated with uh, sewing here. Take those two pieces together. Before I take it out, I will now need to also create a four patch from four and a half inch colorful squares. So let me take a bunch of those and set something together. So let's put this one, this one, this one, and again dinosaurs that will fit nicely. And again, I will just chain piece it after that first block. Threads are holding my block so I can just put it the other direction and chain piece. There's only one seam here you want to match and nest here. All the others are not nesting. Picking up my four patch from the four and a half inches and I will do the same thing. The thread is holding them in place so just open up put under direction and there's that one seam in the middle you would like to nest. Now I will take both of the blocks to the ironing and I will show you the next step. Now I've got my initial blocks ready. They are the same size so if you like to mix those two and just go with this pattern that's absolutely fine. You can stop sewing here. However, I will do the next step, which is I will put my uh, four patch of the four and a half inch squares on top of my mix block, uh, mix size block, and I will sew all around with the quarter inch allowance. We will make the square in a square easy technique with those two blocks, and that's how we're going to achieve the final layout. So what I want to do, I've got my four patch at the top and I want to draw a line with a pencil from that corner seam to corner seam. And I will do that in both directions. To pull it in the middle to align the one of those drawn lines and I can cut in other direction just to make a hole so I can put my scissors in and then you want to cut on those lines up to the corners make sure you get very good in the corners you don't want to have a pucker there very to the end and 
here we go now you want to take it to the iron and you can uh, if you like working with a little bit more strip fabric you can start it now when you're ironing and then we will square it up to ten and a half inch block so here is the block I want to square it up to ten and a half inches so I'm using my big ruler which is 12 and a half and I've used a, a masking tape which is like a quarter inch one you can buy that narrow one uh, to kind of highlight where my 10 and a half inch is so I don't have to look for it again it's just a little bit of easier so if you lay that block this way where you have those uh, snowballs here this is going to be your middle line for for one of the dimensions so that's where you want to put five and a quarter inch line here so that dimension is now divided into half and then here you want to just eyeball to get in the middle don't measure anything you just want to be more or less in the middle they don't have to match up exactly you just want to do it uh, you know quickly there is no need to measure anything and then I can now square it up now when you're squaring a bigger block you don't want to just go and do one line because you are not holding the ruler very well like everywhere with the pressure to not move so you want to go in one corner do a little bit of cutting here then move your hand up to the second cutting here then where as you are in this qu quarter cut here hold it move your hand and square up the rest that way nothing is moving whilst you're cutting and you have well squared up blocks so now I can turn it around and just align now my ten and, a half, ten and a half inch lines on that side and again I'm starting from one quarter move hand and then last quarter really makes a difference with the bigger blocks just try it out you'll see okay and this is what the blocks look like I will obviously carry on to make more of those blocks to pop them on the design board to show you how they can look and how we can kind of lay them out I will also make one block with the florals just to see uh, or show you how that you know different fabrics will work with that design as well before I show you my finished project just a quick reminder where you can find me and how you can support my work you can subscribe to my website to be notified when new tutorials products or patterns are released you can find me on my Facebook page Pola Photo or you can join my group page Pola Quilting with Friends where we all share a work made inspired by my tutorials and answer any questions you may have there is Instagram account called Pola Quilting and if you like to share something you made based on my tutorials please tag me using hashtag Pola Quilting with friends. To support my work please like, comment and share uh, when you see my posts or tutorials. Let your quilting friends know uh, about this channel and invite them to the group and subscribe to my channel. If you like to contribute extra you can use a super thanks on YouTube or buying me virtual tea, coffee or lunch available on my page. All links are in the description below. I would like to thank you all for all the support uh, so far and letting me grow in what I do. This is first part of the block uh, without adding the four patch to the mix with the easy square in the square technique. Uh, I called it the first part of a basket block. So I put four together and they created that secondary pattern here. Here still separate first part of the block uh, in the center and in the corners and then remaining uh, space I filled with four patches. Uh, I quite like that result. So you, you remember the four patch and the basket block is the same uh, size so you can mix and match uh, that way as well. Here I alternated basket block and four patch block. Here is how the basket block uh, would look when separated by plain blocks. So kind of an idea there as well. Now you can compare with floral option. This is the full block here. I had a problem to call it an idea for wacky basket came from Barbara who is a member of my Facebook group. So thank you very much Barbara for that. Uh, I added another word and we have wacky scrappy basket. I think kind of fitting name there. <laughs> here are just the blocks uh, put together in the same direction. Uh, here is alternated direction of the basket. Here is option with sashing. 
and this is my final option I blended layout with solid so there is some space to rest your eye and you can play with uh, quilting as well but I actually quite like that kind of put them all together next to each other as well so so whatever feel is more you know to your uh, taste you you've got both options there I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and, you, and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for joining, thank you for watching and see you next time.